scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. You cannot do it on my own unless you take over. I cannot see these things alone unless you take over. How can I see you on my own? Jesus, take over. Take over. Jesus, take over. I cannot know you on my own unless you take over. Cannot leave this life alone. Unless you take over, let it be your prayer. So take over. again God bless you I truly believe with all my heart and I prayed and I asked the Lord to even honor this desire in my heart first for um, and our sisters our aunties because they they are hosting us and granting us an opportunity to experience God again and, and I pray that the blessing will start from them yeah. hallelujah so let's pay attention and trust the Lord to give us understanding. In this kingdom, we reign by light. It takes more than desire. It is our understanding, our comprehending the ways of God 
This is where the victory of the believer is. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18, he says, having their understanding darkened, says being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. So conferences like these, much more than times where we just fellowship with one another, there are times when the spirit of the Lord opens us up to dimensions of understanding. It matters that you not only know God, but that you understand his ways. Praise the Lord. Please listen. When it has to do with the pursuit of God, our knowledge of his person and our conformity in experience into his image and his likeness, there is no end. We will continue that system of transition through eternity. But when it has to do with your victory in this kingdom, the systems of God and the principles that make for your victory are finite. They can be learned. They can be known. They are not infinite. It is the pursuit of God, the pursuit of his person, knowing him, the encounter that comes. It, it is from one level, one dimension to the other. But as far as you're excelling in life is concerned, you can hold the keys. They are finite. Praise the Lord. Number two, it is important that we understand that the spirit of revelation um, cannot be replaced with an educated mind. Now, I don't mean this to insult our knowledge or intellectual studies, but you see, when it has to do with spiritual things, the character of God's communication is such that both the learned and the learned must equally depend on the spirit of revelation. Sometimes, um, on the strength of the things that we have and we know and the obvious results they have produced, we may not necessarily see the need to be passionate to learn. or two things not his presence his presence will require that you take off your shoes your experience and the symbol that you know him to be he told Moses take off your shoes I am not one of the many gods in Egypt I'm about to introduce myself in a new dimension lest you add me to the myriads of gods take off your shoes for where you stand is holy ground. Let me show you a scripture and then we'll deal with a few things. Um, Isaiah 29 and verse 11 is a scripture that has blessed me so much and is a scripture that humbles me every time I'm about to learn at his feet. It says, and the vision, if you can see it is projected, the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book. Please say the words of a book. The Bible says the words of a book that is sealed, say sealed. And then it says, which men deliver unto one that is And he says, I cannot, for it is sealed. It is not closed, but it is sealed. Just because it was open does not mean the seal was broken. Next verse. The book is delivered unto him that is not learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he said, I am not learned. That means there is a realm where both the learned and the unlearned stand helpless, depending only on the Spirit of God to grant light. May this be such a meeting. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. So let's get to the word. Um, I believe that the Lord is going to really, really help us and grant us understanding. We'll start from 1 Chronicles chapter 12, please, and verse 32. I used to think God dwells in the realm of eternity. And for a long time, until I understood what eternity was, then I found out that God does eternity. He dwells in a dimension that only he can define. 
eternity is time it's just that it is time that is limitless and every time you compress God to time you insult his sovereignty he does not dwell in eternity are we together now God is not only timeless no eternity means the summation of infinite dispensations one dispensation connecting another but they are still time dependent he dwells in a realm that the Bible simply describes as unapproachable light are we together the Bible says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth meaning he was in neither of them you cannot create of that system to create it are we together now yes but when it has because he constructed this dimension of his kingdom and allocated a mystery called times and seasons please say after me times and seasons hallelujah the bible says he made the stars also having made the sun and the moon then the bible says he made the stars and that the assignment of the stars among other things is to signify seasons that means that they can guide our into times and seasons so it is true that god does not dwell in time please listen but he designed man and limited man to function within the circumference of time are we together that means the greatest gift man really has second only to salvation is time and that if you understand times and seasons and you know how to align to the possibilities that come with times and seasons then you can walk in victory the bible is very clear about the fact that all things are not possible every time no you may plant during the dry season as we have in our region here you are not guaranteed to have a bumper harvest if you will have one at all is that true because there is an advantage that comes with the rainy season it saves you the rigor of looking for water the season was designed with that advantage in view so if you desire a bumper harvest your assignment is to continue to look at the weather and to find a time when your desire collides with the season that supplies an advantage is, is God speaking to us yes so with minimal effort you will plant during the rainy season and you will find out that your crops will grow because part of the possibilities and the advantage that comes with that season is rain you can outsource a system during the dry season to supply water but it will be at a cost that means that not all seasons carry the same possibilities please listen very carefully it is important we understand this that every time a season comes there is always what God is doing he's not always doing the same thing all the time he has his emphasis again we see in the Bible Gabriel appears to people to introduce seasons the archangel that introduces seasons are we together now he comes to Daniel to introduce a new season he comes to Mary the virgin to announce to her that she's about to be with child and that will usher another season times and seasons first Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 32 the Bible says and the children of Issachar which were men that had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do he says the heads of them were 200 and all their brethren were at their command what was their advantage they understood the times to know what Israel ought to do so my assignment in this conference is that by the wisdom of the spirit to be able to guide us to know what times 
and that in a time like this what is the posture what is the response what is the advantage that this season comes with for the believer are we together let's go to the book of esther this is where my teaching will come from we're going to be exploring the book of esther for many years the book of esther has been for me a very very interesting book because in this book we do not find the record of a man of God and a priest which is very strange because the character of scripture is such that regardless of the dispensation you would usually find someone who would represent the voice and the hand of God within the context of that dispensation but Esther is very strange the Bible starts by flaunting the glory of a very strange king called Ahasuerus. Please follow me. And the Bible is not careful to show us the length and the breadth of this man's achievement, the extent of his greatness. That he was a king that exerted dominion over 127 provinces. A single man. I wonder why the Bible would take out the time and the rigor to be that detailed. It was fine enough to say there was once a great king. And this man was head of 127 provinces. That's enough. But the Bible goes on to give a meticulously. The Bible talks about his princes. And all the people that represented his cabinet. Amen. Then the scene changes, the Bible introduces a very strange woman who the Bible admits to be very beautiful, called Vashti. Please follow me. The Bible is talking to us about a woman who at that time was his bride, called Queen Vashti. And the Bible lets us know that she was a woman who was fair to look upon. I'm just taking the narrative so that we'll save time. And then at a point, it was... In those days, it was very consistent in the character of kings to organize banquets and invite neighboring princes or neighboring kings and to flaunt their glory in their presence. They would show them the spoils of war. They would show them the treasures of the palace. They would call the orators to come and, you know, just captivate the people with their skill and all of that. And on this one occasion, the king called for a banquet and then while the men were under the influence of the wine and the bounty of the palace on the other side of the palace was Vashti having her own thing she had her own cabinet too and please follow this narrative because there are two things I'll be discussing one today and then the other tomorrow the next major issue the Bible discusses is the dishonor that a woman communicates to the king and the consequence that follows the king calls for Vashti to come and all he wanted to do with her can you imagine that was for her to just turn around and go around and tell the kings look take a good look at this woman who is called my wife and the moment Vashti heard that she felt insulted and she believed she was being used and she rebelled she sent a reply go and tell the king Vashti will not come are we together the king is grieved but decides to stay calm very good man and then the elders come together and advise the king and say mr man we're in trouble it looks like you want to be passive about this issue this woman just showed dishonor and she's in a position where anything she does is regarded worthy of emulation the the effect of this that she has done is that what to begin to do likewise are we together so it says do something that will be a warning preserve the honor of the women in your province by you are more interested in the continuity of your province than your personal agenda and the king says okay that's all right and they threw Vashti away please listen the book of Esther is very interesting because the moment Vashti is banished then the story takes another switch that there is a man who sat at the gate called Mordecai, a Jew. 
Am I boring you? And then Mordecai took a lady in his custody, a village girl, to be very, very modest. And the Bible says that she had no father, no mother. Please follow me. And there is an announcement from the palace. Gather all the virgins in Shushan. The king is about to look for another wife. And Mordecai summons the courage to bring his little girl. Go and try your luck. Paradventure the king may like you. Are we together now? And the rest is history. Eventually, she becomes queen. And then, being queen, she now becomes very strange. The only book in the Bible where the official voice of God and the advancer of God's interest was not a priest, not a prophet, not a mighty man warrior, but a woman. A woman. It was because of that woman that the Jews were preserved. It was because of that woman that Mordecai was preserved. A woman who did not use a knife and yet judge her man. A woman who did not use a knife and yet restored chaos. Please follow me. There is something powerful you will learn. The reason why God allowed a woman to be the real actor. The first wonder in the book of Esther was the transition of, to become the wife of kings in those days were arrogant people. They would not only say go, they would say you are not beautiful. They were, they were like gods. So what did Esther do? Precious people of God that would transit this little village girl who would dare not stand close to the king's palace but now had gotten favor with the king not only to become his queen but she was willing to divide her kingdom without divorce divide the kingdom without divorce let's honor the pastor thank you sir amen. hallelujah amen Esther chapter 4. I'll begin to read from verse 13 and then I'll just share a principle and we'll pray. I hope we're not going to be tired of praying in this conference. I believe in prayer. Hmm. Please read verse 13 with me if it's projected, if you can see it and you're a Christian. One, two, read. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther. Uh huh. Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. Verse 14. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this... Stop, stop, stop. Don't rush. If you hold your peace, when? At... That means this season requires a response, Esther. If you respond another time, it will not produce the same effect. There is a time, Esther, and God is demand on a response. The letter and the threat of Haman. I hope you understand the vendetta between Haman and Mordecai. That Mordecai would not bow as a Jew. And Haman said, no, I need absolute loyalty. This man is a threat to the position, my exalted position. And not only Mordecai, he wanted to annihilate every Jew. Are we together? And Mordecai now sent word to Esther and Esther wanted to the mistake of Vashti. Because let me confess, the palace can disconnect you with the pain of where you came from to the point that you may not remember that once upon a time you were in a position that now exalted God desires that you go back. The palace can so fade the scars of your pain, you will forget you were once at the backside. 
And so Esther was saying, look, this is not an issue of urgency. I'm queen, leave me. And Mordecai said, go and tell her, don't you forget that you are also a Jew. They may start with us, but they will not end with us. Are we together now? Verse 14. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace, when? At this time. I told you about times and seasons. That every time and every season requires a response. And then it says, there, Then there shall be enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. Now here's the point. Please, every woman of God here, read with me the last um what's now the clause one to go and who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this please sit god bless you who knowest whether thou has come to this kingdom for such a time as this hallelujah Vashti is banished and there is a vacancy and you know God is totally not interested in anything that he cannot find a window for me to advance his kingdom please listen when you study the Bible historically many other things happen concurrently with the things written in the Bible that were worthy of being recorded some of them were recorded but they were never captured in Scripture everything captured in scripture were captured with respect to their contribution to kingdom advance if god could not find a space in that story where christ will be revealed it was useless in god economy promotes christ is what he's interested in it doesn't matter how popular if christ cannot find a space for himself in any story in any life in any situation it is not worth his participation for a long time the issue of the palace was not a concern to god because everybody there did not give him space god began to be interested in the palace when there was vacancy because his desire was to find a way to bring the jews out of captivity there were people who had hopped from one level of captivity to the other notice that the name god was never mentioned until Esther showed up. There was nothing in that palace that seemed to honor God. And so God too was inert and silent. But the moment he found a vacancy, he started saying, now my interest can be promoted. And then a little guest, finally, I've gotten someone who can represent my purposes. And through that one woman, not a prophet, not a king, not a priest, the only book, like I said, where a woman played the role of both the prophetic, the apostolic, without no ordination from anyone, she became the voice of God within that land. There are two keys that we will learn from the entire book of Esther. I studied very carefully the spiritual tools that Esther used, both for her exaltation and the preservation of God's people. And surprisingly, I thought I would find so many keys. I was shocked to find only two. And this is what we are going to be discussing. And that whoever will align to possess these keys in this season will inevitably reproduce Esther's dimension of results. And a man's usefulness the rewarding the discerning of a man's usefulness the usefulness of a person could be an object is called honor to discern this is a phone the ability to discern the usefulness of this phone and the ability to not take it for granted i cannot act like my life with my phone and my life outside my phone is the same that's dishonor i must acknowledge the role and the ease that this gadget as small as it is contributes to the improvement of my life 
it can help my efficiency is that true now listen please this honor therefore is the trivializing of a man's usefulness this honor is the trivializing of the contribution of a person or an object in your life i show you why many people continue to fail mm. oh no this is one of the most powerful spiritual mysteries that the lord taught me outside of the law of encounter i thank god for the privilege and the access he's granted he's granted me to um, the revelatory dimensions of god but i submit to you that if you master honor there is no power in existence that sustains the ability to clamp you down in one position you will live your life as exist it's called honor please pay attention i show you why great people do not necessarily rise to the position that befits their sacrifice they have knowledge they have skill they even have god but they have trivialized the excellency honor is not a ladder it's a lift it can turn your life around in a moment in a twinkling of an eye please listen to me in this kingdom who hates you does not matter but who likes you matters <laughs> please away with that theology that it doesn't matter um, I, I don't need men if you are saying that with respect to God's sovereign power you are right but if you are saying that with respect to trivializing the usefulness of men sit back relax and experience the shock that your ignorance will produce the episodes of pain that will come as a result of ignorance to the point that the psalmist says what is man lord you have options there are too many things to think about in the throne but in the midst of the worship he thinks of man to the point that he's not ashamed to chase man he's he 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 he's unashamed to make his vulnerability i mean he shows us how vulnerable and soft-spotted he is how dare you trivialize man what is man that thou art mindful of nor the son of man that thou visitest him please learn this and learn it forever all blessings come from god through men to you no blessing comes from god to you it looks like it came from god to you even jesus came from god through men to men all destructions come from satan through men to men no exception whatsoever if it looked like you had an encounter with god interfacing you and god was an intercessor somewhere just because you could not see the person anna the prophetess was in the temple for 60 years praying down jesus it was not just mary and angel gabriel there was a man in between please learn this I want you to leave this conference with something you know that you can activate right here and now and it can turn your life around are we together all blessings come from god through men to men it is possible for god to say yes and a man says no the answer in your life will be no <laughs> believers please hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like 
for us. Thank you.